Hello, welcome to Three Questions with my buddy Sean Walsh with us today. Good afternoon, Sean. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Kevin. Thank you for having me. So, Sean, we're walking through the eight things that drive the value of your business. Today is number four. What is number four, my friend? Number four is the valuation teeter-totter. Okay, what does that mean? So the valuation teeter-totter is, you know, sometimes with companies, you have companies that have good, steady cash flow, and you have others that ride this teeter-totter, and they're constantly going from, from cash rich to cash poor. Um, and they struggle with that. And there, there are certain businesses that tend to eat more cash than others. But if you go to sell your business, one of the things that a potential buyer is going to look at is what is the typical cash flow that is needed to run your business? And you're going to be expected to leave behind working capital, enough working capital, um, so that they can run the business. You don't just get to take all the cash with you. Um, you get to take most of it, but you have to leave it behind a certain amount behind typically that is how most deals work. Um, and they're going to look at the fluctuations in that cash flow. And if you've got if you're riding that teeter totter on a regular basis and you've got extreme cash flows, that's going to bring down the valuation of your company. So one thing we want to learn to do as business owners is to manage our cash well. So, Sean, what would cause those peaks and valleys in cash flow then? Sure. So, you know, one of the big things, if you're a company that requires to keep inventory, inventory can be a cash suck. So you need to make sure that you're leaving enough cash behind each month to make sure that you can cover that uh, that inventory. Or uh, places that use machinery or heavy equipment. Are you allocating a certain amount of cash each month to go into a fund so that when a machine or maybe a piece of heavy equipment needs to be replaced, you're not scrambling for cash or take, having to take out a loan? Are you, are you planning in advance for those and allocating money over time so that it doesn't hit you really hard? I think a lot of companies just don't do that. They think we have magical equipment. It's never going to break, never going to need sure. to be replaced. But that's a mistake though, right? It is. And you know, and it's as simple as people, again, I, and I know I keep hitting this theme, but it's a, it's a common problem, is that really understanding their numbers. And you know, it's the old joke of, I can't be overdrawn. There's still checks in the checkbook, you know? And People think, well, we must have working capital because there's still money there, but there's all kinds of things that suck up your money. And you need to be very aware of your expenses and your cash flow and how to balance that out properly. You know, I live up here in the Lakes region, and one of the things that kills businesses up here is seasonality. And, and you know, they're cash rich during the summer and they're cash poor during the winter. And they don't know, always leave enough behind to, to, to pay the, the electric bill or the rent or the things that you still have to pay all year round to maintain that business. Yeah, you beat me to that one. That was going to be my next question. Seasonal businesses, you know, Absolutely. I, I have a lot of people who are landscapers and everything's good, Sean, as long as it snows so they can right. plow. Yep. When we had those couple of years, we didn't get snow. They were like, we never thought this would happen. Sure. And, you know, and this is where I do see companies getting smarter. So I know my plow guy for the past several years, you know, he doesn't charge me by the storm anymore. He charges me a flat rate. Yep. And if we <laughs> don't get snow, he wins. And if yep. we get a whole lot of snow, yep. you know, I win. But over the years, it balances out. Yeah. But he knows he's got a certain amount of cash flow that he can predict and count on. He's not looking at the sky, hoping it's going to snow. So, you know, that 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 kind of pre-planning can go a long way. So, Sean, we're getting to a point where we're considering selling our business. How do we take the steps to correct this to add value to our business? So, number one, you need to have a budget. You need to do a good budget that goes the whole year. And you need to know what your spending history has been throughout the year. And you need to allocate for expenses. Um, the other thing, there's a, a methodology that I highly recommend. It's in a book that was written by Mike Michalowicz um, called Profit First. And he talks about um, allocating your cash into separate bank accounts and making sure that you are 
planning for those capital expenses that are coming and that you allocate a small portion every single month to those accounts so that when it hits, the money's there, it's already in the bucket, it's set aside, and you can put it out there. And that, that book is a great, simple tool on how to really learn how to understand cash flow um, and how to manage it properly so that you still walk away with profit at the end of the year. But that makes sense to me because like most people, when we look at a bank account and we see this big balance, we're like, hey, I got all this extra money. I could do something with it. Yeah. But then we do, and then we don't have money later. Yeah. Is there anything you know, else it, people it, should it, consider? Yeah. And, and managing cash flow, you know, and this comes from the book uh, Profit First, it, it, it's like a diet. You know, if we have a big plate and we fill it with food, we mm -hmm. wonder why we're not losing weight. And if we see that big amount of cash in the bank and we spend and we say, hey, you know, we can buy all this other stuff and we can buy these these nice jackets with our logo on it or new computers that you may not really need, you know, you're going to spend as much as you see. So the idea is get that money tucked away into other accounts so it's not there tempting you to spend it uh, throughout the month. Yep, that makes sense. Anything else people should consider? You know, cash is king. Uh, my my team used to uh, used to tease me uh, that I ran the company like we were two weeks away from eating government cheese. When I told my accountant that, he looked at me. He said, "You just keep on running it that way." <laughs> so it, it makes sense, though, like you said, you know, because we just don't know what's you know what we can't see. Yeah, you know? absolutely, you know, absolutely. And you know, and, and you know, Kevin, the the unfortunate part is is. Um, when it comes to not managing your cash flow correctly, there are, I have seen companies that are very profitable still go out of business, not because they weren't making, not because they weren't making money, but because they weren't, they were overspending or not managing the cash flow correctly. So Sean, if people have questions about this, what's the best way to reach out to you? They can reach me at Sean at EncoreStrategic.io or go to our website at EncoreStrategic.io. Sean, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to call to the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for having me as always.